a few weeks. Welcome back to BS Movie News Live. Thank you guys for coming out. I'm so excited, but before we get started today, I want to give a big shout out to a few of my super patrons, Tom McLeod, Patrick Twinkle, and Reginald Lee. Thank you guys so much for your support. Now, today we're going to be, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. So, uh, first up, we're going to be doing some announcements. Uh, we'll get into that in just a second. We're going to have some TV show reviews. Uh, I watched the Westworld pilot and also Mr. Robot Season 2. No Luke Cage today. That'll be next time. Get ready for the fun. I'm ready. It's going to be crazy. T-Bone's ready. ready. Let's, uh, let's get started with Creator Creators updates. So where have you been, comic book girl? You've been gone. You've left us. You don't love us anymore. That's not true. <laughs> That's what the internet's been saying. That's not true, guys. Uh, we have, Team 19 has been up to creating a show, uh, it's called Greater Creators. Content. Four hours of content, T-Bone's directing, he's been amazing, he's, he's the best director a girl could ask for. Thank you. And, uh, you're a great host. oh, thank you, I'm a great host too. So Greater Creators coming along great, we're really excited, it's a, uh, it's around 15 minutes per episode and it's going to be about a bunch of different uh, greater creators, people that we really like, like Gene Roddenberry, Frank Frazetta, uh, Jack Kirby. Stephen King, Alan Moore, uh, we got Frank Stanley Herbert, Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick, yeah, I guess Stanley Kubrick going on. He's going to be the season finale. He'll be a double stuffed episode of 30 minutes because you can't just talk about Stan in 15 minutes only. So yeah, and we talk about their art contributions to the world, their greatest works, why you should know them, and why I think they're awesome. So yeah. All right, next up, it is October. It is Halloween time, my favorite year of the whole month. Uh, Halloween's my favorite holiday of the year. I don't know, I had an idea of what I was gonna be, but now Greater Creators looks like it's gonna be so much work that like I don't have time to really put a lot of work into my Halloween costume. So I don't know, I'm still kind of deciding what I'm gonna do. So we'll figure that out, but I know what I'm not gonna do. I know what I'm not gonna do, and that's gonna go to a store and buy a crappy costume, uh, some knockoff shitty costume, like this one, Juice Demon. <laughs> I saw this the other day on my feed in Facebook. Somebody posted this, and I was like, Juice Demon, this is the worst knockoff Beetlejuice bullshit costume from Party City I've ever seen. So, top story today, Juice Just Demon. Barely, legally gets by with barely, barely legal, Juice Demon. You know, it's so goofy. So, first up, we're going to be talking about Westworld. I just saw Westworld. I watched it last night. It was great. I enjoyed it. Like right off the bat, I'm just gonna say I enjoyed it. Do I think it was? Did, was it a perfect? Was it a perfect situation? Not necessarily. There was a couple things in there that I would like more elaborations on. You know, I felt like some things were were vague. But I felt overall, I really love the concept. This has a lot of potential. I feel like this show could go somewhere really, really interesting. Uh, it's got, it's just, there's so many directions it could go, and some of them could be super lame, and some of them could be really cool, and I just really hope that it's gonna go in the really cool direction, you know, like the, the fun direction. Westworld is you can pay money as a person, go there, you dress up like you're from that time, you show up, you're in this huge, like, area that's completely, like, authentically Western, and there's all these characters, these robot characters in Westworld that you interact with. And you can have sex with them, like there's like prostitute robots, and you can have gunfights with them, and you can just have get drunk with them, and it's, it's a lot of fun, right? It's this big experience. In this show, they're combining the future and the past, which is something that I like. And also, another thing that I'm really interested in is the idea of consciousness, you know, and what does that mean? And specifically, synthetic consciousness. You know, when does a, a robot stop being a robot and starts being a sentient being. Like, where is that line, you know? And so that's something that's always fascinated me. Uh, consciousness in general, like, I just, I am fascinated by the idea of consciousness, even within, like, us. You know, we're just meat puppets, we have a little meat machine, but like, what's, you know, what's behind the neuron in the brain that's telling the neuron to fire? You know, who's telling the neuron to fire? You know, like, where is that? It's crazy. Okay, so the characters in Westworld, uh, Dolores is fascinating. She seems like she's gonna be a really big major player. Uh, played by Evan Rachel Wood. She did a fantastic job. She looks wonderful. Uh, she is the blonde, you know, plucky. She's like, I, I choose to see the beauty in the world, you know. Oh. Are you plucky? Uh, one could say that I'm plucky, yes. People could say that I'm, that's a word people could. But the thing is, is that her character is really interesting because, okay, so there's this, uh, this update that goes uh, through all these animatronic, like, you know, robot people that look very, very realistic. They're very, very realistic. 
and uh, and this this update is kind of this update is the one that's kind of pushing them towards finally waking up and becoming self-aware. Births are painful. Okay, there's no such thing as an easy birth. There's no such thing as an easy birth. So you have the birth of this new consciousness, right? Well, what's driving this? Like, why is this one in particular becoming more aware? Can you imagine, like, being a robot and you're becoming aware and you're becoming aware to realize that you're, like, raped every day, like, horribly and you're made to feel these horrible feelings and you're programmed to, like, what a fuck, like, it's insane. Like, that's an insane concept. I think it's fantastic. And I think that that pain is what's driving her to become more conscious because if she was a robot and everything was fine well there would be nothing for her to complain about so she could just remain a robot but if there's like these abuses happening to her then like I think that would drive her to become more aware so I'm interested to see whether that plays a factor in it uh, James Marsden is, is in it he's another robot he plays her oh I shouldn't say that dang or forget that if you haven't seen it uh, James Marsden is in it. Ed Harris is in it. Uh, Ed Harris was really, I have a lot of questions though about Ed Harris. Like, we'll see what his character is like. Is he an out-of-towner? He's not a robot. What is he? What is his aims? What are his goals? He's kind of, I wish they had maybe pushed him to the next episode or just hinted at him a little bit more. I don't think we were quite ready for Ed Harris yet, uh, but. Uh, Anthony Hopkins was in it. He's great. He wasn't in it a ton, but I liked it when he was in it. And then also the guy from, uh, it's funny, he got typecast, BT from uh what is it hunger games he was like the guy who like was good with the smart guy whatever he's playing the same character in this show uh and but i love him he was really great i got to actually interview that guy in the red carpet for hunger games uh and he was a very intelligent like wonderful human being so i'm really excited to see him back even though he's getting typecast a little bit um oh and i'll tell you the best part about westworld for me the thing the scene that i really liked the most or the thing that really was like, wow, that was really cool, was there was a scene where uh, Anthony Hopkins is talking to one of the older models of robots. This was before they became like really good. Like this is when they're still in that uncanny valley where like they're, they're real, but they're not quite real enough. And the way this robot was acting and talking where it was almost believable, but not quite, the way that was played was so good I wonder how they achieved that effect. I mean, it must have been you had a real actor and then they somehow digitized it. I don't know. I don't know. The guy who played Dolores' father, oh my God, he had an amazing scene like where they, they act like they're robots and they have to go into their personalities and then they, they tell them to stop. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. There's a lot of really great acting going on so far. There's a lot of nudity too. There's a lot of butt cracks and boobies uh, if you're into that. So yeah, Westworld. I'm in. I'm in. I'm excited to see where it goes. I'll be back next Sunday. Hopefully it works out for HBO as the next Game of Thrones. I mean, you can't, this is the problem. They want this to be the next Game of Thrones, but like the Game of Thrones is a breakaway run out hit. I mean, that doesn't happen every fucking day. So why are you putting all this pressure on the show to be some runaway smash success? Because you know what? When they started Game of Thrones, they didn't think it was going to be a smash success and they just let it breathe and do its that's thing. How studios work. And I know that's how studios work, but it's stupid and it's short sighted thinking. And I just, I really see it's bad producing. It's bad producing, okay? And so you shouldn't put all this pressure on this show. A revolution needs a leader. Mr. Robot, season two. I really enjoyed it a whole lot. I really enjoyed it a whole lot. Because here's the thing, okay? You have the first season of Mr. Robot where you have this big thing that they're trying to do, like the big score, you know? They, they gotta take down E Corp, all right? So, and like, that's really exciting, you know? It's like, it's like, just, oh, they have this big thing they gotta pull off, and are they gonna pull it off? And that's like a beginning and a middle and an end, you know? So they, they do pull off this thing, you know, in season one. So now, in season two and beyond, we're dealing with the ramifications of that action, okay? I really love the show. I don't know, I really love it. And I really believe in Sam Esmail, and I wanna like, I, I believe in him, and I'm on his team, and I, I don't like seeing detractors, you know, being like, eh, I don't know, I don't like it. You know, you're just like, fuck you, man. It's awesome. Get like, give, give the guy a shot. Give him a chance. And he's directing and writing every one of these motherfucking episodes. That's yeah, insane. That's it's just one of the most thoughtful best shows to come around in a long time. And it's, I'm not a big TV show person, to be really honest with you. I, I don't really love television. I prefer movies. But this show's got me hooked, and I really liked it. And I loved the, uh, I loved Angela's storyline in season two, especially. She's so fucking fantastic. 
Like, you see this actress in the first season, and you're like, who's this character, you know? She seems like she's so passive, you know? Yeah. But in this season, her character is completely transformed from being a passive character to being like a power bitch, where she's like, no, 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 I'm no longer gonna be that passive fucking bitch that gets fucking stepped on. I'm gonna fucking be the power bitch and like, fuck you. And like, that's amazing. And seeing her transformation, like people online have talked shit about her, compared her to Sansa fucking Stark. And like anyone who's trying to make that comparison can suck it because they're fucking wrong, all right? Sansa Stark is always a pawn and is never playing her own games. Angela, on the other hand, is. Like she's fully committed. She knows she's playing the Game of Thrones. Like she's trying to get better at it. Like she's doing it all the time. And like she's working from the inside. Like she's decided to work in within the enemy. Like, and that's far more difficult than what Elliot is doing, you know? Like, he's trying to affect change from the outside by attacking E Corp from the outside. Whereas she's on the inside trying to see how this actually works and how to subvert it, you know? And like, that's a harder job. And that's also one that's like, I mean, real change starts from the inside. And so, and she, and the thing is, is she's being personally torn up by this process. Like to become a shark, you know, to, to swim with sharks, you have to become one. And like, you have to become the monsters that you kind of hate. I really loved, yeah, Dom. Yeah, I love Dom because I love her as a person. I love where she's coming from. Uh, she's amazing, like a very strong, awesome character, but you don't want her to win, you know? And like, it's so frustrating for you as a viewer. It, it causes this tension that's just so beautiful. It's like this really great tension between you and this character because you, you like her personally, but you also don't want to see her succeed. I will say with Elliot, I'm a little uh, frustrated with him this season because, I mean, at the end of the day, he really is just fighting himself. And I, I want to see him commit to this action that he's taken, you know? It's like he's like, oh, no, we can't do this, you know, bomb this thing. And, and it's like, no, just do it, dude. You're, you're too far in. You got to go all the way in. And he's, he's just, he's trying to just tip it. And I am not in it. Darlene had a lot of really great scenes. I mean, Darlene had a lot of really great character development. And Cisco. I mean, I really enjoyed Cisco this season as well. Philip Price is my favorite. Philip Price is the most fascinating character for me. I love Philip Price. He's so crazy. Uh, he's just like one of the most powerful dudes in the world. And that speech he gives when Terry Colby asks him, why do you do it? Why do you do all this? And it's just because he's like, I just have to be the most powerful person in the room and I just have to have that. And if I don't have that, I'm upset and I will do literally anything to get it. He's the ultimate elitist. He's the ultimate, like, I want to change, like he literally wants to change the world and, and like guide history. And if you look in his office, you know, there's all these maps of like Europe before World War I and like how World War I changed the face of Europe, and like that's what he's doing. Like Mr. Price is trying to change the face of the economy in the whole, instead of just Europe, in the whole world. And I think that he allowed this hack to happen so that he could push his e-coin thing, because and like that ties back to the end of season one, where White Rose was saying that Mr. Price, like comparing him to Nero, who let Rome burn. Uh, supposedly because he wanted to rebuild it in his own image. And I think that that's exactly what Mr. Price has done. He's let Rome burn, you know, he, and like, because he wants to rebuild in, in the way he wants to rebuild it with Ecoin, to where he has more control and more power. Ugh, I just, anything that's dealing with the machinations of power and commerce and, you know, philosophy and all these things I'm super into. Mr. Robot did get robbed at the Emmys, I feel like, because for best show, they were nominated for best show, and uh, Game of Thrones won. The last two episodes of Game of Thrones were amazing. They were amazing. But, like, most of the season, there was a lot of touch and go, okay? There was a lot of bullshit in there, okay? There was a lot of fucking bullshit in that fucking season. I, I still enjoy it. I still want to watch it, but it's not to the level that I felt like Mr. Robot was at. Like, it wasn't operating at the cinematic, like, thoughtful level of writing. Because, like, that's the thing, writing. The writing was not that great last season, you know? On the other hand, Mr. Robot's writing was flawless. So I just feel like... You know, I think they should have won. But whatever. I'm glad that Rami got, got the dude, like, got the his ups. He deserves it. I love that guy. He's great. But just, man, just, it was great. <laughs>